in the field of project management there is a really important concept called critical path analysis and we can use this to understand how the project plan is going to progress which activities can become a roadblock if they're not done on time and it derail the whole project so in this video let me explain what critical path analysis is and how to do those calculations using the good old microsoft excel now obviously if you have got a dedicated project management software like microsoft project or something then you can do all of this automatically but many times those software incur an additional cost whereas excel is right there on your computer so i built a critical path analysis tool in excel using simple formulas well not so simple some of those formulas would require a strong dose of coffee but i think it's going to be fun so let me show you what i have got here i have uh, a simple project with just six activities and the information is captured here in the input data section and i can see which activities are on the critical path right now activities one two five and six are on the critical path naturally what this means is if any of these activities were to change like their duration or their dependencies or anything then it's going to have an impact on the overall project duration and the scheduling so let's first understand the concept of critical path and then we can go in and see how to do the implementation through excel so let's imagine this is how our project plan of six activities looks like we have got activity one which is a requirement for activities two and three and then four and five are dependent on two and finally six is uh, the finishing activity now let's say this is how the estimated durations for each activity are so the first activity takes seven units of time let's say seven days then you have got 10 days six days three days five days and seven days given this information we can now perform critical path analysis and then find out which activities are on the critical path we'll just assume that the project starts on day zero so by the end of first activity which doesn't have anything else before it it will be seven days so we start on day zero and we finish on day seven here and then comes the activities two and three now both of them can start in parallel as soon as one is done so this activity activity two can begin at the earliest on day seven and then because it takes 10 days the earliest we can finish activity two is 17 days We'll do the same for activity 3 it can begin at the earliest on day 7 and it takes 6 days to complete so it will be done on day 13 we'll write these kind of numbers against all of these activities now comes the fun part for activity 6 we cannot start it until all of its predecessors do its job so even though activity 3 is done by day 13 and activity 4 is done by day 20 we can't start activity 6 because we have to wait for activity 5 which will only be done on day 22 so the earliest an activity can begin is the maximum of all of its predecessors earliest end times so in this case 22 will come here and it takes seven days to complete so 29 so for this little project of six activities it's gonna take 29 days to complete just as we have done earliest we can also calculate latest an activity can finish this is where the passing will be not in the forward direction this is called forward pass where we go from the start of the project until the end of the project we do a backward pass this is when we start from the end and then we go back in time to see how when is the latest an activity can begin so the latest activity can six can finish is same as the earliest it can finish so it will be 29 this side it will be 22 because it takes seven days and then we start going back in this direction and then calculate what is the latest each activity can finish so the latest each of these activities can finish is on day 22 because this guy has to start on day 22 so we'll put 22 here 22 here 
for this and then 22 here for this and then we subtract the duration so we'll come to this side once you have all of these numbers i know it looks like a bit of mess then the activities on critical path will pretty much have same numbers top and bottom but essentially we look for the difference between the finish values here so 7 minus 7 is 0 so wherever the value difference is 0 those activities are considered to be on critical path so we can say this guy is on critical path 17 17 so this is on critical path 20 and 22 so this is not on critical path whereas 22 and 22 so this is on critical path and 29 and 29 so this is on critical path so this is the critical path for my project 1 2 5 and 6 this means activities 3 and 4 have a little bit of slack or float they can move around a little bit they can be delayed or they can have a little bit more duration on them and still not derail the project so that is the theory behind the critical path analysis i know all of these numbers can look a bit confusing but essentially there are two concepts a forward pass where we calculate the earliest each activity can start and finish and a backward pass where we calculate the latest each activity can finish and start once both calculations are done then we can look for the activities that have zero float or zero slack that means they don't have any difference between the finish times for earliest and latest and those are the activities that are on the critical path now let me show you in excel how to do all of these calculations using the formulas they can look a little bit clumsy but again once you understand them you can easily apply this concept for any kind of project where you have a set of activities and durations already available to you oh hey if you are enjoying this video give it a like it is really critical for me <laughs> let's go so here is my critical path calculator workbook each activity has a unique identifier in the id column and the name of the activity goes here in the predecessors column i have listed the predecessors for each activity i'm gonna put an image of the project plan here so you can refer to that if there are more predecessors for an activity like activity 6 depends on 3 4 and 5 to be done then we just comma separate them and list them there and then the estimated duration for each activity is entered here in number format given these I have done all of these calculations and wherever the float is zero those are my critical path activities I can highlight them if I want now let me quickly explain the formulas we'll come to the successors in a minute but first let's understand ES and EF ES stands for early start and EF is early finish earliest an activity can start is if the activity has no predecessors that means it doesn't depend on anything it can start straight away so then it will be zero otherwise if it does have a predecessor or a set of predecessors so for example in this case here activity 6 depends on 3 4 and 5 then the earliest it can start is when all of its activities are done so the maximum of the earliest finish time of all of its predecessor activities so here this is the formula i'm using excel 365 without excel 365 we wouldn't be able to kind of do these formulas very easily in excel but excel 365 makes it easier for me to do all of that in a seamless way so we are checking at the rate predecessors that means the predecessor for this activity if it is blank i have no predecessors then i can start the activity straight away so zero is my start time else i want to get the maximum finish time of all my previous predecessors so to get the maximum i am using a complex formula here let me go inside out so we look at the predecessor column and then do text split on it with comma separator the text split will return the values in text format so i am adding a plus zero to that to convert that into number format and then i am choosing ef column the earliest finish column so choose rows of ef this is how I can get all the predecessors finish times and then using max formula I'll find out what is that maximum value when is the latest all of my predecessors have finished their job then we'll put that value as ES 
So this formula, when it goes down, it will eventually calculate. But for this formula to calculate, it depends on the EF calculation. So here in EF, the calculation is whatever the earliest start that I have plus the estimated duration. Now you might think, oh, this looks a bit dicey. This depends on that and that depends on this. Isn't this a circular reference? Well, technically it's not a circular reference because even though the formulas themselves depend on each other, the actual logical flow will not be like this. So for this to understand, I'm going to delete this and then you can see that all of them can begin straight away. Now, if I say this plus that, then Excel will kind of rearrange the calculations so that it can show me these values. This is what I mean by the formulas are a little bit complex, but once you carefully study them, you will understand those values. So this is how we do the ES and EF. For latest start and latest finish, while we can write more complex formulas, it will be easier if I have a list of successors. So this is why I calculated the successors first. A successor is kind of like an opposite of predecessor. So for me to generate this, I'm using a text join function along with uh, a lambda by row function. This kind of looks a little bit more complicated. I have got an article on my website that explains that if you are a little bit not sure how to write this, you can also hand type these values as long as they're correct as per your project diagram, you'll get the same results. So we reverse the same flow for LS and LF. Here the calculation begins with LF first. So here we are saying if I don't have any successor, then my finish time is same as the earliest finish time. So earliest I can finish would be same as the latest I can finish. For all other things, it will be the minimum of all my latest finish values. So it's the opposite, but we are going from back. And finally, we calculate the float, which is nothing but LS minus ES. You can do it on S side or F side. It's the same way it will work out and you will get the float on each activity. For example, here activity three has a float of nine. What it means is, it means you can delay this activity by as much as nine days without changing the overall schedule of the project. So even though it is supposed to, for example, begin on day seven, you can start it any day, not just on day seven. Let's say the person who's supposed to do activity three is away. You can start it on day nine and you will still be able to meet the goal of the project and finish it on day 29. Likewise, if activity three, for whatever reason, the amount of work you have estimated is not six days, it takes more than six days. So it takes nine days. Notice that even when I change this to nine, my latest finish time and earliest finish time do not change, I'll still be able to deliver my project on day 29. Now let's see what happens when one of the activities on critical path changes. So for this, I'll highlight that. So you can see that one, two, five, and six are on critical path. And let's say critical path activity number two, we estimated it to take 10 days, but it actually took 12 days. You can see that this will have an impact on the overall duration of project. Whereas activity three, if I change this to nine days, it wouldn't have an impact on the overall duration of my project. Not just critical path analysis. We can use Microsoft Excel to build interactive project plans or Gantt charts, complete dashboards to understand how various things in your project are doing. I've got videos for all of these aspects on my channel. So check them out using the links that are shown on the screen and improve your project management using Microsoft Excel. I'll catch you in one of these places. Bye-bye.